Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So we've been playing a lot of offense for the past few videos. So what we're going to do today is actually look at how do you know if your computer has been hacked? What are the pods opening? What are the services they're running within your management? And how can you actually be able to disable them so that you can stop the cyber threat, stop the hacker from going after your critical information? And of course, today we'll look at the top five techniques you can examine your systems to look out for potential compromise. So let's get started on today's tutorial. So over here, I have a Windows 10 machine running and it has already been compromised. It has already been infected and there is a hacker at the back end taking control of this machine. So the first thing you want to look at is actually right click on the taskbar and click on task manager. So once you click on task manager, you can actually look at the processes. And you really want to look out for potentially malicious, abnormal process they are running. So of course, this actually requires some time for you because you really have to understand what's going on. So one of the potential red flag over here is a Windows Defender notification icon. And at the same time, a lot of hackers use PowerShell to actually gain access into a system. And over here, we see there's a PowerShell running. However, we don't see PowerShell tab or a window at all within the task manager or within the whole Windows operating system. So what we can see is I have the hacker machine running on the background and the hacker machine can be logged in right now and it has complete control of the entire operating system. So over here, I have a Windows running and on the right side, I actually have the hacker machine running. And what happened is that the hacker can actually access directly into the session. So when they click sessions, they can see what sessions is running. And over here, we can see that we have the information of a system, which is a Windows operating system is running on desktop and it has the username of Loy Liang Yang. So what happened is that the hacker would actually do an interactive ID access into the system. And from here on, they can enter PWD, which would list down all the information regarding the current directory of the target system. So what happened is that if they enter, for example, LS, it would actually list down all the files within the desktop. So over here, when we go back into Windows 10, we can see that we got Firefox installer, we got hacker, we got JKQ and other executables, and it's all listed on the right side by the hacker. So what happened is that when you find all these malicious activities in the task manager, the first thing you want to do is to enter end task. So this will kill off the session and the hacker will no longer have access into your computer. So by clicking end task on the right side, which is the hacker's profile, you realize that the session has been closed and they no longer have access into the system anymore. And the second item you want to check for is to enter command prompt. So once you're in command prompt, you really want to look at the network statistics, what's happening in the background. So the first thing you can enter is actually enter netstat. So once you hit netstat, it will tell you what are the established connection from both local and foreign addresses. And the next thing you really want to look at is enter netstat slash question mark. So it will tell you what are the parameters you can use to actually look for some advanced statistics. What are the processes in use? What are some other items that you really have to watch out for so that you can know what's happening in the environment? So the first thing you can enter is actually enter netstat dash a n o. So of course, a actually stands for displays or connections and listening ports. And of course, N stands for addresses and port numbers in numerical form. And O is display the owning process ID associated with each connection. So once you hit that, you can see a lot of the processes as well as the associated connection. And you really want to find out what's really going on in the environment. So the first thing you can look for is in terms of the funny local IP address connecting to a foreign IP address. So over here, what we can see is that we can actually look out for potential attacks that's happening. And of course, one of the key highlights over here is actually on port 8044.3. So this is a established connection going outwards into a hacker machine, which is residing on the intranet. And what can possibly could have happened is that the hacker gained access into your wireless, and then they boot up their own listening server and force an entrance into their machine. So if you go back into here, which is a attacker machine, you can enter sessions. And once you hit sessions, you can hit sessions. And of course, here we can see there is a more information coming in. And the information is actually surrounding on port 
IP address of 182.168.1.13 as well as the port of 8044 tree. So this is actually the attacker machine which is listening for incoming traffic from the target system. So over here on Windows 10, you can actually see more information and we have an establishment of the connection. And like what happened in Task Manager, you can actually go into Task Manager and you can actually look at the services they're running or the processes. And you can find out a lot more information from here to actually see what's going on in the background. So of course, if you right click on Windows PowerShell and you go to Go to Details, and on the go to details, you can see the process ID and we see the process ID as 5424. So of course, when you go back into task manager, you can actually look out for 5424 as well. And of course, this is the attacker going after your machine, establishing a connection. So the third thing you want to do is actually to install Wireshark. So Wireshark is a way for you to actually analyze real time traffic going in and out of your operating system. So over here, you would choose the installer of choice, like 64-bit or 32-bit, depending on your Windows operating system. And once you have it installed, you can go ahead and double-click Wireshark. So here, we can actually select the adapter in question and click on the top right corner to actually do the capturing. And in the capturing, what happened is that if the hacker actually do a session connection into the target machine, and they do, for example, PWD to list out all the existing directory as well as a LS to list out all the files within the working directory. What happened is that if you go into Windows Wireshark, you can actually see the destination IP address. And over here, we can actually see here on the 192.168.1.13, which is the attacker machine coming in. And we got the current IP address of 192.168.1.14. And there's a lot of interaction between these two computers. So by right, a lot of your machines that are connected in-house in your operating system should only be connected into the computers or legitimate IP addresses outside of your network, which is on top of web surfing, like on the common popular sites or domains. So the fourth thing you really want to look at is to search for your firewall and look into the Windows firewall setting. So over here, we see that all of the connection and all of the networks are being secured by your Windows Firewall. And we can actually look into the advanced option and see what kind of applications are allowed to communicate through Windows Firewall. So over here, we can see there's both private and public information. And then we can see all the applications that are allowed to actually transact with your operating system. So the firewall is doing the correct settings and you make sure that there's no funny software that is being allowed to transact within your Windows firewall. So this is really key, especially in terms of protecting your application. So what happened is that the hackers would actually have the permission and privileges to actually disable your firewall very quickly. So over here on the right side, we can actually see that this is the attacker machine running a specialized software to actually bypass privileges and they actually have your system access. So what happened is that they will actually shut down your Windows firewall by the following. And all they got to do is so quickly that they could actually disable your firewall and any traffic and any connections can be connected directly and very quickly into your environment. So what happened is that they will actually do a net shell advanced firewall set and it would actually enter current profile and then they will enter the state and they will enter off. So this would disable all of the firewall and we can see that there is an OK sign coming from the operating system. And when you go back into Windows firewall and when you enter firewall, what you see is that your private network has now been disabled very quickly. And the last item that you really want to check for is your Windows Defender or any antivirus system that you're running. So over here, we can see that we have a Windows Defender and we click on it. We can see there is a real time protection is being turned off. And because of that, again, the hackers, what they are doing is that they're trying to disable a lot of the security mechanisms within your operating system that would actually disable all those security features and make you highly vulnerable to further attack and persistence across your operating system or your laptop or your desktop or even your mobile devices. So there is in it how we actually look at the top five techniques to actually look at whether your computer has been compromised by a hacker. So these are very simple ways and there are a lot more advanced techniques that hackers use to evade many of these detection capabilities. So in the future discussion, we'll be looking at some of the advanced ways to examine some of these potential threats. And of course, also across your laptops, your mobile devices, your tablets, 
and ultimately your Windows and Linux machines further and see how else we can detect some of these potential threats. So I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of those comments. And remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.